torch, boy. Do as I bid thee. Go! I'm almost afraid to stand alone here in the churchyard, yet I will adventure. Sweet flower, with flowers thy bridal bed I strew, which with sweet water nightly I will dew. The boy gives warning. Something doth approach. Give me that mattock and the wrenching iron. Give me the light, therefore hence be gone. Live and be prosperous and farewell, good fellow. For all this same, I'll hide me here about. His looks I fear and his intents I doubt. Thou detestable moor, thou womb of death, gorged with the fairest morsel of the earth. Stop thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague. Condemned villain, I do apprehend thee. Good gentle youth, tempt not a desperate man by urging him to fury. Oh, be gone. I apprehend thee for a felon. Here, wilt thou provoke me? Then have at thee, boy. Oh, Lord, they fight. I will go call the watch. Oh, I am slain. If thou be merciful, open the tomb and lay me with Juliet. If faith I will, let me peruse this face. Mercutio's kinsman, the noble county of Paris. Triumphant grave, a grave! Oh no, a lanthorn slaughtered youth. For here lies Juliet, and her beauty makes this fault a feasting presence full of light. Tybalt, lies thou there in thy bloody sheet? Why art thou yet so fair? Shall I believe that unsubstantial death is amorous? For fear of that, I still shall stay with thee. Oh, here, here will I remain with worms that are thy chambermaids. Oh, here shall I set up my everlasting. Rest, here's to my love. <coughs> Thus with a kiss. I die. Saint Francis, be my speed. How now, Peter? Here's one, a friend, and one that knows you well. What torch is yon that vainly lends his light to grubs and eyeless skulls? It's Romeo. How long has he been there? Full half an hour. Romeo! Alack, alack, what blood is this which stains the stony entrance of the sepulchre? Then what I took to be a dream is true, and further, horror. I did hear him speak of some fell liquor that with venomous speed would him to death's black bosom swift dispatch. And all is lost. Ah, Juliet still sleeps. What unkind eye is guilty of this chance? Whoa! The watch approaches. We must fast away. Come, come, good friend. We dare no longer stay. What's here? A cup? Close it in my true love's hands? Poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. Oh, shall drank all and left no friendly drop to help me after. What? And Paris too? Oh, county that would take my maiden head. Lie here. Thy dagger rests in Juliet's bed. Hold, hold, I live. <gasps> what? Romeo not dead. The pothax poison coursed through my veins, a dizzy drowsiness which I mistook for that numb torpor which doth presage death. But in an instant it hath passed. Oh. What? Juliet? Oh, Romeo, thou starts! I am not dead, for I too drank a draught of fluid that had longer but this a benign effect. What's there? Who's that one then? What's here? Whoa, whoa! Come, lads. Come. Martin Knox. Look. Here. Look. Lo. We are approached. But now, noble prince. What calls our persons from our morning rest? What should it be that is so shrieked abroad? What fear is this that startles in our ears? Oh, Romeo. Oh, sister. Oh, Paris. Slim. What strange reversal hath this morning brought with Romeo returned? He having fled, dead Juliet alive. Quick, Paris, dead. Not dead, so much as stunned. 
For Romeo's blow, deflected from my heart, did but a moment give the appearance and accoutrements of death. As with my potion! And the Pothax drop! What's this? Oh. The people in the streets cry Romeo! Some Juliet and some Paris! And all run! Without cry to the couple's monument! And I, fair Rosaline, ran after two, hearing of Juliet's death to mourn with you! Hot morning! Morning flowers now dawn festival, and merry peals will take the toll of funeral. Tis true, our joy demands a cheerful bell. Oh, father, mother, sister mine as well. Who's there? Who's there? Dread Southern, in guilty flight, I did attempt to escape your wrathful judgment, but conscience stayed my steps and turned them round, and penitent, I hear abase myself. A pelton? There is no crime. Stand, see! All those in chains of death are unbound free. What joy! Then further tidings I must tell. For on my hurried passage, I did meet another whom the jaws of death let go. See here, Prince, is your kin, Mercutio. Mercutio recovered. Why, sirs? I. For though thought dead and born for burning up, my friend Benvolio observed a of slight proportion in my countenance, and I was taken to a nearby town where I was cured by surgeons of renown. Yet further news comes from him. Speak, Benvolio. Let's yes. Yes, yes, Vendorio, speak. I shall, my lord, but tis a tale I fear will try thy patience, but I swear tis true. My friends know, oft in their society have I been told in jest I am too gentle for our revels, and almost feminine in countenance, with not a hair of manhood on my chin. Oft has it been so said, and I have laughed and spoken gruff and slapped my thigh to counter it. But now, Deception's o'er, and I confess that from this same near town I once did flee, pursuant of a love that fate denied, and so to effect my passage took myself the form and outward clothing of that sex to which my love but not myself belongs. From nature let deceit no more disbar, Benvolio becomes Benvolia. Ah, oh, oh, oh. oh, me! Oh! You? Ah, oh, yes! Indeed, twas he, he whom my mother and my father sought to bar my company and hand. But hearing last night of their quite sudden mutual death, I am released from bondage and disguise. So everything is done. What? Paris? Oh! Has sweet concord all taken blackest woe? It has, and everything. Why, Romeo! Upon the road in flight, I did perchance to come across this wizened, withered man who hobbling was along the way from Mantua, and asked where he might find a desperate man who might have bought a deathly liquid from him. From your description, I resolved it was the self-same wretch from whom you bought the dram of poison in the self-same town. Oh. I asked what was his purpose. He answered straight. Uh, Darkness, uh, his age, uh, dread infirmity caused him to prepare not poison, but an harmless cordial of sharp effect, but no lasting peril. Oh, what's this? Good Balthazar, all matters are resolved, and good apothecary. Thy mischance has proved a most enduring, happy circumstance. Now at last may Toscan loudly ring, and tables sound and men so sweetly sing. Yes, all's concluded. Everything is done. <laughs> Turbot, still lies locked within the dread embrace of dread or death. Why come, sweet wife? And half an hour ago, we thought a half a dozen kin were slain. Let grievance cease, let Tybalt's bones remain. Yea, let it be so. 
Let tumult lie still there. And to a merry dance, let us repair. A blooming piss is smiling with a drink. The sun for happiness shines forth its head. Go hence and have more talk of happy things. All shall be pardoned and none unfair. For never was a story better set. Should be singing, seeing the skies fluttering before. 